down, everyone seems to know what love means, though no one finds it easily to define. Write that down. The title of this the series here is Love. What is, what is it good for? Absolutely everything. Everyone seems to know what love means, though no one finds it easy to define. You'd be surprised because the English language is so limited in the word love, in a four-letter word. We can love coffee, or you can love your wife, or you can love a horse, or you can love a ring. But, you know, it's all different types of love. But because of the limitness of uh, it's the English language is so limited, it only does one word, love. And a lot of people don't really know what that means. So everyone seems to know what love means, though no one finds it easy to define. First, let me tell you what love is. First, love is personal. Write that down. Love is personal. In other words, when you're in love or when you love something, it's a personal thing. Now, if you love coffee, you're a Starbucks person, you're going to be there. You don't care if that coffee costs $10 a cup, if you love it. Now, me, I'm not a coffee person, but I'll pay $100 for a crawfish. I'm a Cajun. I love crawfish. I can suck their heads, make their eyes click, son. I, I love crawfish, son. Crawfish is in trouble when he see me. That's why his hands go up. Jesus, <laughs> receive me right now because Jesse going to eat my body. Yeah, I am. Love is personal. Write that down. That means it's a personal thing. It's more than an abstract thing. It's a personal thing. It's also dominating. See, if you love something or you're in love with something, you will be dominated by that. So love is personal. Love is dominating. And love is a spiritual experience. If we can just teach people the value of love and the thinking of other people, it's amazing. You will solve most of the problems in the world. Politically, socially, economically, every kind of way, shape or form. Let me say it again. If we can teach people the value of love and the power of thinking about others, the greater part of the world's problems will be solved. You see, the reason why we're having so much trouble in the Middle East is a lack of love and a lack of thinking about each other other than wanting to kill somebody. To such a degree, it blinds you to a point that you don't care if there's a child present. Now, before you jump all over Israel or Jumbo, you got to understand it. And when people are using people as human shields, a war is going on. But you got to understand World War II. Do you know how many civilians died in World War II? The bad part about war, and no one should love it, is because innocent people die. I could stop all wars. You know how you stop all wars? You get all the leaders of the countries, all these old fat men, old fat women, put them on the field. Y'all fight each other. I promise they'll slap each other about twice, the war's over, they ain't gonna then kill themselves. But they're gonna move upon a 17, 18, 19, 20, 21, 22 year old to fight somebody's egotistical problem. Oh, you hear what I'm saying? But if we can teach them the value of love, oh Lord Jesus, what's love got to do? Absolutely everything. If we can teach them the value of love and the power of thinking of others, we can, we can actually solve the greater part, the greater problems in most of the world. Are you hearing what I'm saying? And that's what Jesus came for. He came so when these problems could be solved and it's done through something that's very simple to receive. Because once you understand love, as I said earlier, it's a personal, it's dominating. Once you dominated by love, then you won't hurt your brother. You won't hurt your sister. If you're dominated, because love is a, has a dominion factor to it. Are you hearing what I'm saying? And when you understand that, oh, it's a powerful, powerful thing. So what's love got to do? Absolutely everything. Everything. Everything is involved in what you do. In some way, shape, or form in these four types of love. So everyone seems to know what love means, though no one finds it easy to define. Now, I want you to write this down. Love is due to the initiative of individuals, not institutions. Write that down. Love is due to the initiative of individuals, not institutions. Love is not a corporate thing. It's an individual thing. But if you can teach individuals, then you can help institutions. Do you hear what I'm saying? You see, when you understand that, that it's a one-on-one -on -one thing every time you walk in love. Uh, when you walk in, it's a one-on-one -on -one situation. Love is due to the initiative of individuals, not institutions. So many people, you know, they try to build, well, the 70s, <laughs> God, we wanted to build an institution. We was going to smoke dope, go out, go out in the caves, go out in the desert. Yeah, man, yeah, peace, man. That didn't work. Now, don't make fun of that. That's your senators today. <laughs> That's your congressman. 
That's how it was. You know, hey, no, no. Trying to make an institutional living. That don't work that way. Love has to be done through individuals, not institutions. So let me say it again. Love is due to the initiative. You have to make that effort. Do you know the first thing God required of me after I got born again was to tell Kathy that I loved her? Do you know I had married Kathy for five years never told her I loved her? I didn't say those things. Why? Because men don't talk like that. Men talk like this. My wife said, I love you, honey. Men say, me too. How many men know what I'm talking about? How many ladies know what I'm talking about? Every time you, yeah, look at the ladies. Me too. They don't want to hear me too. They want you to look them in the eyeball. Say it. Just say it. Say it loud. Say it slow. But say it. <laughs> right? But men go, yeah. See, so after I got born again, I mean, I could have come out. I got saved in a bathroom in Boston, Massachusetts. I could have come out the bathroom and said, Kathy, I was born again. But my first obedient act given to me by God Almighty was to tell that woman that I loved her. When I walked out, I, I, it was the hardest thing. Because even though I was born again, I still am a flesh man. I went, Kathy, uh, uh, Kathy. And Jody's right there, say it, Dad. <laughs> Kathy, yeah, go ahead, say it. I got to hear it. Go ahead, say it. It almost made me mad. Wait, I'll get it out. She knew it, but I never would say it. So, I, I mean, it, I mean, it paused the moment. I love, I love. I'd like the Fonz, you know, the Fonz on top. Love. <laughs> But I got it out. And she went, oh, this is Lord. And Jody grabbed my leg and Kathy grabbed my shoulders. It was a wonderful experience. And I thought I was hugging her. She's going to make me say it again. And the Lord said, for the rest of your life. You see, love is due to the initiative of people, not institutions. Isn't that something? So when you see what I'm talking about here, you teach the people the value of love. And I love this, the power of thinking about others. I'm trying to get, I want to go on to something that God keeps me, the power of thinking about others. Did you think about somebody today? If you did, you probably bless someone today. They don't have to be financial. It can be a smile. The other day I was, uh, I was doing some, uh, well, I was um, in this store and I just looked at this, I could tell, you can tell when people are sad. You don't have to know them, you know, sad's pretty easy, easy to recognize, something wrong. So I looked and I said, I just smiled. I went, hello. I went, hi. <laughs> and you know, when you got a white, when you're white headed like I am, you know, it does bring a little respect to you. It really, thank God, I need all the help I can get. Glory to God. It does bring a little respect. I, and they went, they didn't know how to, I said, hi. Having a tough day? Yeah. I said, tough times don't last. Tough people do. You tough. You can make it. Exhale. Thank you. I said, you want some more? I said, you're struggling? You, you, you're struggling financially, aren't you? You wonder how you're going to pay that bill. I said, I'll tell you, you're going to pay it like this. And I said, here's some, oh, I can't receive that. I don't receive charity. I said, oh, you don't receive love? But I don't know you. I said, you don't need to. You just don't need to. All I did was practice what I just spoke to you. The power of thinking about others. Now, I may never see that person again. They said, you look so familiar. I said, I'm Tom Selleck. <laughs> I had to say it. I just had to say it. <laughs> and some people are so, they, they go, you look so different in person. <laughs> I said, no, no, no. <laughs> no, no, no. But you think some people are just, they, 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 okay. <laughs> Why did you do that? Write this down. Selfishness creates a path for conflict. Love creates a path for peace. Selfishness creates a path for conflict. Love creates a path for peace. What love is, hate can never be. What love is, hate can never be. Got to clean these things on if you don't mind. See, what love is, hate can never be. You can't love somebody and then turn around and hate them. If you know who God is, if you know agape, 
Vallejo, Stargate, and Eros. Because it's too dominating, this love. It's too personal and it's too spiritual. And it's done through individuals instead of institutions. And what it is, it creates a path for peace. Now when you become selfish, it creates a path for conflict. That's how divorces happen, selfishness. That woman ain't take care of me. That man ain't take care of me. He don't love me. Before you know it, you begin to do things for your own self. I've, I've, never, I've been amazed at some of the people that I know, they take separate vacations. I'm not saying that's wrong, but I ain't going on vacation without Kathy. What I won't do? <laughs> Who's going to find my socks? She says, yeah. <laughs> How she's going to find Louis Vuitton without El Shaddai? <laughs> she said, I got my own money. Yeah, I know. <laughs> You see what I, I just, I ain't going on vacation by myself. Now I might go on a hunting trip and I brought her with me on a hunting trip. I mean, I, I, I don't, I'll take her anyway with me. If you want, vice versa, doesn't make no difference. Now I'm not saying that's wrong to go on different vacations. We've got to get away from each other. What's your problem? Listen, Kathy is the only person, I'll give you a little hint on what I'm going to preach on uh, when I do my night meeting. Kathy is the only person in this world that can drive me up a tree. Make me mad in a horn. And I can drive her up a tree too, but we're in the same tree. <laughs> Got it? We ain't changing trees. Now that's the difference. We ain't changing trees. We never think about changing trees. But we, she's on one branch, I'm on the other. <laughs> and you know, we. we I, it's when I first met Kathy, it was wonderful. We, we, I learned so many things about her. Then I had a law. I knew everything about her until menopause hit. <laughs> I learned things about Kathy I ain't never learned in my life. You know what menopause means? Men, pause. Pause. Pause here. Okay, mama. Don't freak out, I'm not embarrassed. That's called life. You know, everybody goes through that. And I've never seen that before. I never heard of a hot flash. I mean, I heard of them, but I never experienced it. Till we were in Hawaii. And we went to this jewelry store and I was looking to buy her something nice. I turned around, look at and sweat I went, what's the matter? She said, shut up. I said, what's the matter with what's what's for where I was like, shut up, shut up. What's your problem? I said, hot flat. <laughs> I start blowing on her face. I never experienced that before in my life. Just all of a sudden, wham! So we went over to Brookstone and bought one of them little fans. <laughs> Kathy got them all over the house now. The other day she, went, she saw Diana Hagee hit with a hot flat. And Kathy gave her the fan. <laughs> Diana went, thank you. And I saw John. I'm just joking, John. I'm just joking. <laughs> it's called being normal. What's wrong with that? I never experienced that before. Never in my entire life. Kathy's always been cold. All the time cold. No, oh, Jesus. I said, I'm sweating here, woman. Oh, man, you got it so cold in here. I said, it ain't cold, Kathy. I said, if you went to hell, you'd say, ooh, this is cozy. <laughs> the woman has always been cold. I'm there, I said, my guy can put the, put the air, I said, listen, I don't mind being in the building. I can sweat, not her. I went, how many times I'd come in from, from preaching that night, the woman in the bed have a ski mask on and a full jogging suit. With, not the tennis shoes, but just again. What's your problem, woman? I thought a robber was in my bed. Whoa. I've had it happen to me. What's love got to do? Got to do. But now it's totally different. Kick them car, kick them blankets off, kick the thing. Lord Jesus. I came in the other day, everything's off. She didn't have anything on. I went, thank you, Jesus. <laughs> Bless you, glory to God. Hey! Oh! 
show. Man, I got my lean back. I start, what's up, Kathy? Come on, baby. How you doing? <laughs> Woo! Look at it, I'm gonna kill you. Yeah. Yeah. I'm having a wonderful time with this thing. This is great. This should have happened when she was 18. I'm learning things about, boy, she get mad quicker than I'm, oh, she'll fly off the handle. I said, okay. <laughs> now, some of y'all can't talk about your wife like that because your love to your wife is not dominating personal and a spiritual experience. Boy, he lost a few right there, didn't we? <laughs> you can tell when he hit him go, <laughs> I'm going to buy this tape myself. I, I like this tape. <laughs> Selfishness creates a path for conflict. So we refuse to be selfish. Love creates a path for peace. So we make a decision to bring peace. What love is, hate can never be. The other day I heard somebody say something that bothered me. I heard a child tell someone, I hate you. I did not like that. That's none of my business. But I did not like that. Because they, the child really doesn't know what they're saying. You know, but sometimes, you know, everybody get aggravated. But I mean, those things, that's, that's a word that should really be completely taken out of our vocabulary. Because it's really a very bad, it has no depth. It, it, it's a bottomless pit calling. See, but love is a, is a high that you learn all your life. You just keep going, going, going. Every day I get up and I, when I reach out to the Lord, I love him more. And I never thought I could. I never thought I could, but I find it. I don't know, maybe while I was sleeping, he stretched it off. There's so many levels to this God that we serve who is love. <laughs> so I refuse to create a path for conflict by being selfish. And that's anything I do. Now, I do that sometimes. You, if you've ever been with me, I walk, I'm, I'm pretty easy. I go with the flow. I mean, look, with, with the motorcycle riders are here. Lori and Kenneth and uh, Dennis and Vicky and I think uh, Happy and Jeannie. And usually, me, I'm the easy. They say, what y'all want to do? What up? We go. See, I'm on vacation, man. I don't care. We don't do nothing. No, we do a bunch of every, everything. One time, Gloria said, what, what, what are you going to do, Jesse? Remember that? And I said, uh, I'm going to stay in this hotel and do nothing today. Y'all want to go ride, y'all go ride. Gloria said, I feel a witness myself. Maybe I'm just going to stay here myself. And, you know, read a book, do something. Just whatever. Ain't nobody get mad about that. We just enjoy it. We don't create paths for conflict. And if we do something crazy, we all help each other. And if I, if I drop my motorcycle, Dennis and Kenneth will help me pick it up. And if they don't know how to put the oil and the stuff in there, I show them how to do it. <laughs> okay, I lied. Come out, you devil. Come out. Well, I did one time. One time, Dennis. You know that's true. One time. One time. <laughs> Y'all remember that? Y'all heard about that story? I'll tell you what, every time I ever tried to get Brother Colton, you know, he, he, he always tell me, read the manual. I read the manual and I forget a paragraph or something. He said, did you read the manual? Yeah, I read the manual. Well, you didn't understand it, did you? Well, I said, yeah, I thought I did. Well, how come you didn't do it that way? Well, one time, him and Dennis, boy, they were struggling. And I saw what the problem was, and I had the answer. I went, thank you, Jesus. <laughs> so I just walked over there. There's Dennis going, I don't know how you going to say, what you want? I said, use this and you'll get it in there. <laughs> Remember me saying, I walked out, I love it, Glory said, look at there, Jesse's helping Kenneth. <laughs> <laughs> that was the first time and the only time, but bless God, I'll never forget it as long as I ever live. It was a, a, a <laughs> yes. I, she was so, you said you were impressed? You would really be impressed with my ability. It was a funnel. <laughs> they don't have to tell them everything, Glory. <laughs> they didn't have a funnel. But the old Watash boy here had a funnel. <laughs> it don't take much. But they couldn't have got it in there without my funnel. 
I've got that funnel hanging on the wall. I have <laughs> the funnel that helped Dennis and Kenneth out of trouble. Glory to God. <laughs> now go with me to Galatians chapter 5, verse 6. Because I don't want to take up too much of Jerry's time here. As you turn into Galatians chapter 5, verse 6, let me, let me read that previous point. Selfishness creates a path for conflict. Love creates a path for peace. Notice something about the Apostle Paul. Sometimes the gospel will not, it will, it will never create selfishness, but it, it, it will it, it, it'll put a divide between what's wrong and what's right. You see, and people say, well, you're just trying to make me do that. No, God don't try to make anybody do anything. There's simply a law and it's up to you to follow it. And if you don't follow it, that's your business. But you're going to pay for it. One day you'll stand before God, whether you believe it or not. It's like an atheist told me, he said, I don't believe in God. I said, there are no atheists. There, there are no unbelievers after death. Shoot the dice, man. You're a gambler? Shoot the dice. I said, because if there is no God, I didn't lose anything. I lived good and I was, I was a blessing to people. But sir, if there is a God, you're in trouble. Shoot the dice. Think about that next time somebody tells you something. See, because see, being a Christian don't hurt anybody if you walk in love. In fact, if you use love being a Muslim, you won't hurt nobody. If you use love being a Buddhist, you won't hurt nobody. Think about that. Love across any denomination, non-denomination, any religion of any kind. Love is a powerful, powerful force. See, now Galatians chapter 5 verse 6 says, For in Jesus Christ neither circumcision availeth anything, nor uncircumcision uncircumcision but faith which worketh by love so you got to understand everything is connected if you want things to work all the time you got to connect the dots that's about as simple as I can make it you have to connect the dots if you want something to work if you want to be financially successful let me help you you got to connect the dots you got to find out what's working in your area if you want to stay there if you're going to be an investor in a local community, you got to find out what works there. What do people like and what they dislike? Then you're going to have to work 24-7 and connect the dots. You see what I'm saying? Because you can direct somebody to do something, but if they don't truly understand your vision, it'll never get done. Because you see, they're going to get tired quicker than you to walk off. But if you understand the passion of your cause, you ain't going anywhere until it's finished. Now, I use the word ain't. That may not be good English, but it makes good sense. You see what I'm saying? You got to connect the dots. It just depends. Oh, it, 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 spiritually, physically, or financially. If you want, how many of y'all want to be a success? Now, first you got to define what is success to you, not to anybody else, to you. Because if you don't know what you want, I don't care what you see someone else has, you may not be able to handle what someone else has. You got to find out what makes you successful, what makes you think the way you think, and why you think the way you then you connect the dots. And once you connect the dots, I, 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 I'll give you some wisdom here. You don't have to do any of this, but I did this when I was a kid. I found out the richest man in our town. Richest guy. Everybody talked about him. he was filthy rich. I was a kid. I was 16 years old. 16, maybe 16 and 17. I went up to him. Well, I, I, I don't mind mentioning his name. His name was Mr. Funderburg. I said, Mr. Funderburg, he said, how you doing, Jesse? You know why I met him at? Shiny shoes. His shoes, not mine. I said, Mr. Funderburg, I'd like to take you to dinner. He said, what? I said, I'd like to take you to dinner. He said, well, that's very kind to you. Jesse, why do you want to do that? I said, you're the most successful man in this community. He said, well, that's what people say. He was a nice man. I said, well, everybody knows it's true. I said, I can't see nowhere you don't own something. He said, that's true. I said, could I take you to dinner? He said, well, you want to get a hamburger? I said, no, no. I said, I want to take you to a fine dinner. He said, well, you're going to spend all your money. I said, that's okay. So I took him to a fine restaurant. Sogwalls. Watch this. I told the waiter, do everything slow. He said, what? I said, do everything slow. I guess... How many course meal we got here? He said about a five course. Take it, do it slow, do it slow. And if you come up to us, you can switch it, don't interrupt. And I said, now Mr. Funderburg, now this is a kid. What 
What made you so successful? How did you get where you go? Then I shut up and I started listening because I figured if it had worked for him, it'll work for me. And I wanted it slow because I wanted him to remember everything. And then when we got to the final, I said, would you like some dessert? How about a coffee? Come on. And when I finished, oh, we must have had about an hour and a half meal, I guess, maybe, maybe a little longer. Now. I had it in the, not the gray cells, my hair was brown in those days, I had it. And I said, Mr. Funderby, if that'll work for you, that'll work for me. He said, that's correct. He said, these are very easy, easy principles. He's the one who told me, connect the dots. Find out what people need, find out what they want, find out what they got, and then you supply what they need, what they want, and tell them what they got is not good enough because you have something better than what they have. I've applied that all my life. Do you know I've never lost a dime in my life? I've never lost a dollar in my life. In 28 years of full-time ministry, I've never had a financial deficit. I'm not, I'm not smarter than anybody else by no means, but I ain't stupid. I listen. I can be talking and listening at the same time. It's called several tracks. Something like Kathy gets mad. You ain't heard a word I said. Repeat it. I repeat it. She goes, why? Because I want something to work. I don't like to pay for the same real estate twice. You connect the dots. Now, the way you do that with God, going over to the physical, you connect that dot of love. Because see, there's some things you can make money on that you shouldn't make money on. Because you're making money on someone's hurt real, real bad. And you're not allowing God to speak to you concerning that situation. And before you know it, you become something I call a bottom line man. You don't care who it hurts. You don't care who, what people are. Years ago, they used to have companies. Remember the, the companies that the, father, the grandfather worked, the father worked, and the son worked? You don't see that today, do you? No, nah, it's all bottom line. What do you can make for me? Boom, boom, boom. Why? The love was gone. When the love is gone, then it just becomes cold, callous. You cut people, you cut them, you hurt them. But years ago, you used to have what we call, what, I, I went to work for Shell Oil Company, and I was introduced to several people. They said, this is a, these are Shell babies. I said, Shell babies? Well, their grandfather worked for Shell Oil Company, their father worked for Shell, and now the grandson is working for Shell. This, this was years ago. But the same thing with U.S. Steel. All these, when people, you know, really cared about each other. But then everybody got into, we're gonna make all the money we can make and we don't care who we got to cut, we don't care who we got to hurt, we're gonna get what we want, we're gonna get in, we're gonna get out, we don't care how much blood's laying on the ground, how many brains out there, it don't make no difference. You got what you want. That's a wrong way of thinking. Because eventually you're gonna run out. See, eventually someone's gonna be under such suppression and oppression that they're gonna come against you for what you have. Oh, but if you provide something, if you provide some love in this situation, and you, because love will provide a future. See, and then people feel sound about their future, sound about their love. Ooh, you can change the world in every area, spiritually, physically, financially. Are y'all enjoying?